Okay, thanks very much for, for having me here this morning. Um, what I'd like to do is to introduce the Charities Regulatory Authority, talk a little bit about what our role will be um, and what we're working on at the moment and what we hope to achieve over the coming months. Um, John said that this was the beginning of a conversation. Um, I, I feel that with Disability Federation Ireland, we, we've already begun that conversation and, and I very much welcome that. Uh, in preparation for setting up the authority, we in the Department of Justice held uh, a consultation last year, which some of you may be aware of, and Disability Federation Ireland were very engaged in that consultation. Um, and you know, so, so I feel like we, we're already in conversation and I hope that we'll be able to continue that conversation um, forward in, in a constructive way. So I just, I, I'm not going to get at all technical um, with this, partly because ours is a very new organization and we're not really ready to get technical yet. We have, um, there, we will be putting in place a range of, of reporting standards and, and so on for charities, but none of that is in place yet. So what I want to do this morning is just give a, a flavor of what the organization is there to do and how we hope to work with charities over the coming months to, to implement uh, the Charities Act, which is our, our own um, uh, piece of legislation. So just the basics first. The, 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 the bare bones um, of, of what we're starting with. The Charities Regulatory Authority is to be a new independent regulator for the charity sector. And I suppose that's the whole charity sector of which you know, yours is, is one of many subsectors, um, if you like. So we will have um, an independent state agency. It's being established under the Charities Act of 2009, and it, its sponsoring department is the Department of Justice and Equality, and that's where I was working until I was appointed Chief Executive of, of the new body. Um, but it will be independent in its discharge of its functions, and I think that's, that's a critical piece for this uh, new regulatory system to have um, the, the credibility and the confidence of both the sector it's regulating and of the public at large that the legislation provides that we're independent in, in our discharge of our functions. So an independent regulator for charities with an independent board, and some of you may have um, seen that a number of weeks ago, just at the, at the very end of April, um, the Minister for Justice and Equality appointed named the, the members who will be appointed to this board. And we have a board of 16, and in fact, its first meeting is going to be held tomorrow. So a fairly busy week for us um, at the moment. But there is a, a board there um, with a range of skills and um, experience as set out in the Charities Act. So as you would expect to see on that board, we have legal expertise, we have accountancy expertise, and then we have expertise from the charities sector um, itself. So an independent board, a chief executive, uh, that's myself, and a, a small administrative staff. We have a team of 11 to start with, um, and, and that's, it's a small staff, but it's, um, it's what we have to get going with to get the register of charities established and to get the new office set up. So, the functions under the Charities Act, the, 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 um, the areas of responsibility that we will have that will ultimately affect your organizations, um, the, the key first piece and our initial number one priority is registration. Um, and some of you may have heard me talk about this before. Um, we are to establish a register of charities and all organizations that are currently registered with revenue will automatically come on to our register of charities. We'll then publish that register and that will provide for the first time um, in Ireland a comprehensive list of all the charities we have with some basic regulatory information, who they are, <coughs> what they've been set up to do, where they're doing it and who their trustees are. Now, I think that a key objective of the Charities Act is more transparency. And that's gonna be the beginning of that. Obviously in time, 
you know, transparency needs to grow. There's a very understandable public demand for more information about this sector. And we, one of our key roles is to meet that demand. But what we'll be starting with is the basic register, the basic regulatory information, and putting that into the public domain. So um, following the registration then, uh, we also have functions in respect of monitoring. And this is where I suppose we, we'll be at the beginning of a conversation with, with other regulators as well, because I'm, I'm conscious that, you know, that this is the, the charity sector um, is a space where there are uh, a range of different regulators active. And part of what we will need to do um, is to, to work out how our role fits in with, with the roles of, of other regulators that are there. The key thing for us and, and, and for charities to recall when they're engaging with us is that we are regulating charities as charities, not as providers of particular services, nor as you know, carrying out certain um, activities in the community. We're regulating them as charities. And you know, that's what will dictate our engagement um, with, with all the, the, the organizations that we work with. Um, so there is a monitoring role. There is obviously, there are extensive um, powers in the Charities Act for um, our compliance work. We have, will have powers to investigate charities. We will have powers to um, take intermediate sanctions where necessary to ensure that charities are complying with their obligations under the Act. So there is a full suite of regulatory powers there in the Charities Act. That's not what we're going to be doing this week or next week. We have a uh, an initial job of work to do to build a charities register and to bring in our reporting requirements, which we will develop in consultation with the sector. But what the, the, the introduction of this regulation does, um, it's, it's putting in place a framework which ultimately you know, will, um, will entail a full compliance program that, that we will develop again in, um, in consultation with the sector. We also have an advisory role we are required to provide advice um, both to charities themselves about um, how to meet their obligations and also to members of the public and the government about the charitable sector. Um, we also have to provide the commissioner's services, which were, are an existing suite of services that are provided by the commissioners for charitable donations and bequests, which has a small office in, in Clare Street. I don't know if any of you are familiar in dealing with the commissioners, but those functions the commissioners will be dissolved when we are established later this year formally, and the commissioner services will come to us. So we'll be continuing to provide them as well. Um, in terms of, so, so that's, that's the to-do list, if you like. That's ultimately, you know, what our role is going to be um, as, we, as we develop piece by piece. We're having to take a very phased approach to this, obviously, because we are starting small. But just to give you an idea of what the focus is, is for now, um, we'll be formally established later this year by ministerial order under the Charities Act. We expect that to be sometime in the fourth quarter of the year, um, although the date itself hasn't been announced yet. Um, we'll be, as I mentioned, continuing to provide the commissioner's services. The, the staff from the commissioner's office will merge with ourselves and um, we'll have a, a, a single office where we'll continue to deliver these. Um, but the, the key focus in terms of our new functions for us at the moment is to register all those charities who are currently registered with, with revenue. And what that means for, um, for those charities is that they'll be hearing from us around the middle of this year and into the autumn. We'll be contacting all of the CHY charities to say, you know, here's the information we have for you from revenue. Please verify that it's correct or provide supplementary information if where we need it and this will then form the basis of your entry on the Register of Charities, which we will then move to publish um, in, the, in the months after that. So that will be the first, the first kind of um, interface that charities have uh, with, with, with our office, and we expect to be sending letters out and contacting charities um, around, as I say, the middle of the year and, and into the autumn. Um, we will then move, once we have that, that basic, and there's about 8,500 charities currently on the revenue list, so it's a, it's a sizable number, and we, we'll move to publish that register once we're, once we're satisfied that, that we have it um, and that the information that we have is correct. And we'll move to publish that register. It will be an online register. 
um, I am um, perhaps naively at the moment believing that um, we, we'll be doing all of this without paper, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take that approach. Um, I've, I've yet to see the paperless office, I suppose, but we, we are um, approaching this on the basis that it will be an online register and the charities will engage with us um, on, uh, on an online basis in providing their information. Um, so we'll move to publish that register and then we will take the step of registering all the other charities because we tend to think of the charity sector in Ireland as being the eight and a half thousand who are registered with revenue. But obviously that's only a part of, of the charity sector. There are many other charities out there who for whatever good reason of their own ha have never needed to apply for a tax exemption from revenue. And yet they will all um, need in time to come and register with us. Um, because ours is to be a comprehensive um, register of charities. So again, that'll take time. We'll be rolling out a phased registration program once we have the initial CHY-based uh, register in place. Okay, so, so what's it gonna mean then for charities to be on this register? And I suppose the first thing it means is that then charities will, will become charities in the meaning of the Charities Act 2009. Now, the Charities Act 2009, it, it doesn't change what it means to be a charity, but what it does is it consolidates it all and it, it spells it out in a way that we haven't had it spelled out in Irish legislation until now. So there will be certain requirements that charities need to meet. They, they'll all be familiar to, to everybody. I mean, it's, it's, it's not new. It's not changing the nature of what it means to be a charity. Um, you know, obligations in relation to governance, obligations in relation to, to the keeping of accounts and to publishing certain information and to managing your affairs in a particular way. Pre-existing obligations, but that will now be captured under the framework of the Charities Act 2009. And, and, and one, of the, one of the ways, one of the important ways that um, we'll be meeting our transparency um, obligations which is a, a very important objective, as I said, of the Charities Act, is the charities will be required to report to us an annual report of you know, what, what you've been doing in the previous year and, and how you've been advancing your charitable purpose, that that will be supplied to us according to you know, a, a template which we will develop in consultation with the sector, and that those reports will then be made available to the public as well. And so again, it, starting with the register, but then coming into this publication of annual reports, we'll see um, a, an increase in the transparency uh, of the charity sector. Now, I know, I mean, a vast number of charities are already publishing, you know, fine, detailed annual reports. But, you know, it, it's not universal and it's something that, that we're required to do under the Charities Act and charities will be required to meet this obligation. And um, so that's there. I've, I've gone ahead of myself there. The development and introduction of reporting requirements and guidance. And guidance is an important piece here because we want, uh, when we first come to say to any registered charity, right, we're now expecting your report by such and such a date, we want to be sure that that charity knows exactly what it needs to report and how it needs to report it in order to be compliant with our legislation and with our regulatory requirements. So that's why, and this is in response to what we've heard from the sector through the consultation that we did last year and, and continuing dialogue, we will develop templates for these reports so that people, so the people running charities can be sure, look, if I provide this information, that's, you know, I'll, I'll be on the right side um, of, of, uh, of these requirements. So this is all, you know, this, this, this is work to be done um, in the coming months. Um, monitoring and compliance programs, I've put that there on the end of the slide because um, it, it would be a missing piece if I didn't, but I'll be completely honest with you now, this is not our current priority. And our current priority is to get the registration piece in place and then the reporting requirements. This is a little bit further on down the road. Um, and you know, that, that's a, a, um, a conversation that we will be having uh, with the sector, but it's, it's not number one on our list uh, for now. Okay, I, I just want to, I mean, so those, those are the kind of, those are the things that we're busy doing now. I just want to talk a little bit about strategic objectives and about what's guiding what's guiding our approach to all of these things. 
Um, and uh, the, the first thing I'm going to say is, is that you know we are required to regulate in the public interest, and, and maybe this might go a little bit to. Um, uh, you know the the issue of relationships with with other regulators and and working out how how to do that best. And um, of course, you know our our sector is the charity sector, and um, we are you know very keen to build up um, a constructive relationship with the charity sector. We know that we need the confidence of the charity sector to be able to regulate effectively. But our I suppose our our, our overall strategic objective is is to regulate in the public interest. And you know, we will need to think in relation to the, the functions that we have under the Act, how we can best deliver those functions in the public interest. Um, the charity sector, regulating for an effective and well-governed charity sector that delivers public benefit. And again, the, you know, these are all drawn from the functions that we have under the Act, communicating the public benefit of charities um, and, and, and developing the understanding amongst the general public that charities do deliver public benefit and that they are required to deliver public benefit is again one of our, one of our functions um, under, under the Act. Building public trust and confidence in charities, you know, this is something that we need like never before. Um, our office is not being established as, as a reaction to, to everything that occurred and the damage that has been done to, to public trust and confidence in the charity sector. This has been in the pipeline for many years. Um, but I think it, it can be part of the remedy to, to that, a part of the remedy. Obviously, there's, there's a, a, a lot that the charity sector itself um, is required to do and is doing, I think, to, to respond um, to this, this, um, the, the damage that, that has been done to trust and confidence. But certainly, uh, our work, I think, is a piece of this jigsaw. Um, strengthening charity accountability and transparency. I referred to those already. Um, they're absolutely critical pieces to us. Um, we, we have extensive transparency provisions in our legislation and we will be expected to meet them. And I know that that, you know, can, it can be a little bit nervy. Um, it's, 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 it's new. It will maybe, you know, push a lot of us outside of our comfort zone, but it's something that we're required to do. And what we want to do is to work with the charity sector to ensure that, that we get it right. And part of getting it right is, is the final um, word I have there is proportionately. We're, we're very aware that the, the charity sector in Ireland is hugely diverse and that we need to apply our uh, regulatory requirements in a way that recognises that diversity and that is proportionate. And, and that's provided for within the Act. So, you know, the different categories of reporting and accounting thresholds and so on, that's all provided for in the Act. What we'll be looking now is to translate that into a reality in terms of the, the reporting framework um, that, that we develop. The infrastructure that, that supports charities in conducting and communicating their work. Now, again, you know, this is, the, the core of this is the register, um, but also then moving to the, the, the uh, routine and, and regular publication of reports from charities. We, you know, I, I like to see this as something that um, can be very helpful to charities in terms of telling their story. And that's why when we come to design those, those reporting templates and that reporting framework, um, I, I think um, to be successful in that, it, it, we'll be working to find um, a reporting mechanism that allows charities, that helps charities to communicate the value of what they do. Um, and you know that that involves a whole conversation about how we describe outcomes, and you know what, what it is that how how a um, report can be structured so that it can help charities to, to communicate what they do, rather than you know we, we do not want this to be a, a, a tick box. Um, burdensome type of exercise that charities go, oh, I have to do this every year, you know, and it's a right pain. We want it to be part of um, how charities can communicate uh, their work. And then addressing non-compliance, obviously, that's there. And we will, you know, we, we will have the powers to address non-compliance and to investigate charities uh, where we have reason to believe um, that, that that is necessary. Um, oh, I thought I had another one. I think it may have only said thank you, though, so um, that's okay. Um, there is one, one final thing I want to say, um, is that, you know, we are, um, as I said, we're a small office, 
We have a big sector to regulate. Uh, this hasn't been done before in Ireland. Um, th there are a number of, of things that will be critical to uh, getting this right. One will be, obviously, that we work with, with other regulators um, and the revenue commissioners as well, which obviously we liaise with them very closely. They don't, they're not a regulator of charities, but they, they will be uh, the basis for the initial, um, the initial register of charities that we'll set up. And obviously we know that you know, the tax uh, status is critical to charities. And so we, you know, and that is something that is determined by revenue, will continue to be determined by revenue, even once our office is in place. And so we will be developing a memorandum of understanding with revenue to see how we can, you know, most sensibly discharge our separate, but, you know, um, uh, our separate roles, but that nonetheless impact on the very same organizations. So the, the relationship with other regulators, critical but also the relationship with the sector. And this is where I want to mention the, the role of umbrella and representative bodies, such as Disability Federation Ireland. We can't possibly hope to engage directly with all our charities, um, at least in the early years when we're getting started. And yet, I think it's very important that charities are aware of us, that they know who we are, that they know what's likely to be coming, um, and that they, they feel that they have a way of expressing their views and concerns, if there are concerns, about the rollout of this regulation. And that's where we'd be looking to organizations such as um, the, the umbrella and representative bodies, such as DFI, to, to be part of that channel of communication and to help us communicate out to the charities. And that's why I welcome very much you know, the opportunity to, to address a, a gathering such as this. And I hope that you know, we, we'll be able to continue this conversation uh, with your own sector as with the other sectors um, across the broader um, charity community. Okay, I'll leave it there for now. Thanks.